We're at a Ford dealership. What are we doing at a Ford dealership? We're gonna go look at a 2006 LLY. Not the LBZ, but the LLY. <laughs> <laughs> they have one here at a Ford dealership. Hey, what up? I will say the truck sounds really good. <laughs> Try to find a, uh, a tow truck so that we can tow the show trucks around. Um, I really want a dually. I don't think a dually is gonna be practical for daily driving. We're gonna look at a 3500. I'm looking for 3500, 2500 GMC, Chevy. Just any Duramax, really. Pretty much any Duramax between 06 and 2010, just because of the, the price point of them. And they're still good vehicles. They're still, you know, they'll still be like 250,000 miles or less. The LML is a solid engine. The LBZ was a, you know, one of the best engines that they made pre-emissions. And then you have the 06, the early 06 model of the LBZ, which is a, the, they dubbed it the LLY, but it was just the detuned version of the LBZ. Cause all the internals are the same. Yep. So. That's the um, one we're looking at today. That's what we're gonna go look at right quick. Hopefully everything checks out on it. See what happens from there. Yeah, and <laughs> huge shout out to Truckmaster because you have a whole checklist. Yes. You have a whole yes, checklist. Yes. Also a huge shout out to Edge because they sent me this CTS-3 a while back, maybe like a week ago. And I think today is the perfect time to use it. We get to check the balance rates and check, check engine lights rates. and all that stuff. Yeah. It's but gonna be good. It's gonna be you good. You brought your iPad? I brought my iPad because, you know, I'm old, man. So I gotta. <laughs> the, the checklist check is on the iPad. Heck yeah. <laughs> that way I gotta sit there with my phone. Exactly. Like this. <laughs> he came prepared. I'll show you guys just how prepared he came, though. And what do we have here? There we go. This guy brought a topside creeper <laughs> to crawl that's underneath under, that's it. The under one. Oh, underside, underside creeper. Side. Yeah, he brought one of these so we can go, we can look under the truck. We might even take it to. North Augusta Customs. And inspect it, put it on the lift and inspect it. So, all right, let's go check out this LOI. Technically, an LBZ. All right, so here we have the truck that Matt is looking at. It's an 06, it's an LBZ. Mechanically, an LBZ. And it's, you can already tell it's been tuned and deleted. So yeah, it's an LBZ, but on paper, it's an LOI. What you think? <laughs> okay, that's not good. That's not good. I mean, I don't know, man. It looked good from afar, but now that I'm here, I don't think it really looks that. Good. She's a 10 footer. Looks good. Looks good from 10 feet away. I mean, like the front bumper is chipping, and some of the trucks that you've looked at, they're they're in way better condition than this. This grill needs a lot of love done to it. Yeah, New headlights. Like you need. Screw missing. Oh, so there's a clip missing right there. Yeah, the you need you need a whole new front end. Dude, I don't know. I mean, it's got kryptonite tie rods and some supporting mods that are good. I mean, under the hood, it's got whole whirly fab stuff. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, it's obviously been tuned, so it's up to LBZ specs. Mm -hmm. It's got a DSP5 switch in it. It's got some other fancy switch in it. Where? You see the little rocker switch? I don't know what that does. Ejecto Cito. Ejecto Cito, cuz! The seats definitely need some love. I mean, for the price that they've been advertising it for, yeah, I can't do it. Yeah, they are asking like right below 20 for this. They are asking right below 20 for it. It's got the exact same amount, amount of uh, mileage as my LOI. And I will say my LOI was a lot cheaper than this and it was in way better condition. You know, it's just the LBZ is like the holy grail Duramax. It's basically like what everybody wants, everybody desires. For the price, you can find an LOI in way better condition. You can find the LMM in better condition than this. Oh my God, look at that paint chipping right there. Did you know that? Yeah, I saw it yesterday when I came by. I came to the city and got it yesterday. So I could already kind of have my mind made up. With, you know, looking at the outside of it, the inside is in a lot good, condi better condition than it is, you know, just a little couple things on the outside. All right. We're missing half of the freaking fender liner over here. <laughs> I and think they, they had to do that because the cooler pipe. Yeah, and then look at all this trimming that they did right here. Like, mm. they, it looks like they probably had some bigger tires on it at one point, maybe. 
It might be with this setup. Yeah. They, but they, like, they didn't have to trim that far off. I don't know. Maybe these mud grapplers. Yeah. And then, like, this is all you can tell it's been grabbing right here. That's uh, that's NorCal trim done the not done the correct way. Eat up right there. We'd have to pull up the Carfax history too and see where it's been. See yeah. if it's a northern truck or they, not. I, I don't think so. I think it's a South Carolina truck. Yeah. Um, they had the Carfax on the website before. Hey. It was a. It came back. I think it was clean. I don't know. I have to look at it. Again. I hope it's clean. I mean, you can tell it's been a. Been sold some. Seen its fair share of dirt roads. Oh, it was definitely a work truck. Yeah. Line life. Sunroof. I saw that. I guess, I bet it's axle dumps now. I yeah. think that's what it is. Whoever bought it decided to do an axle dump on it. Yep. That's a huge tip. <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> I mean, it's got <laughs> bad ass wife only. <laughs> you think your wife would like that? No. Oh, I'm gonna, like, take that mess off right now. <laughs> She's like, you can put my name right there. Man. Take that <laughs> oh, man, that's hilarious. I mean, I could kind of see the potential, but yeah, yeah, the amount of money they're asking for, like, you're going to have to put two grand in it just to fix a lot of this stuff and make it look good. Should You might even need a whole new paint job. Definitely need a whole new paint job. Because, like, all this chrome's got to go. Like, I don't yeah. Know. I understand chrome and white is cool and everything. I'm not, not a chrome type of guy. Just not that much chrome. You got fog in the headlights. Yeah, you need a whole new front end bumper. And if, did you look at the hood? It's got a lot of rock chips too. And I looked at the coolant reservoir. It's a little black in there. I don't know if that's soot. Oh, yeah. Because if it's soot in there, it's the head gaskets. Man, I feel like I don't even need to waste my time doing doing the checklist. Like <laughs> The truck master's checklist. You did your homework. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's legit. <laughs> how, how long did you spend on that checklist last night? Um, 30 so minutes? Maybe about 30 minutes. Right. I went to one of the Duramax forums. Yeah. And one of the guys, actually, he had already created one, but it was for Dodge Ford GM. So I took out the Dodge and the Ford stuff. Yeah. And just kind of customized it. Went back, watched Truck Master's video, made sure I got everything out of that. And then, so it's kind of like a collab with one of the guys from the Duramax one of the Duramax. Oh. What's the first thing we're looking at? Head gasket. So squeeze the upper hose radiator. Oh wait, that's not gonna work because the cap, I removed the cap and uh, then the truck's been running too. You gotta do it when it's cold. I, I don't think, he, he just yeah. pulled it around. Shouldn't have been that bad, yeah. right? No? But there was no pressure whenever I opened the, uh, opened the cap, so that's a good thing. I don't see any pinholes or any drilling in here. Um, so obviously we took the cap off once and you said there was no pressure mm -hmm. and the, we I mean the truck just literally ran across yeah. the parking lot so I don't think it had time to warm up and the reason why we look for pinholes is because if the coolant reservoir does have pressure the pinhole would be there to relieve the pressure so that's right. why we look for that all right fuel filter and EGR cooler heads I know where the fuel filter is at but Where's the EGR cooler head? Oh, it ain't here. <laughs> it ain't here. <laughs> I don't know where that stuff's at. So they did an EGR delete, I guess? Yep. Full wide bridge kit. Where's it typically at? Because I don't know. I'm it not, would I've be never, I'm not a big diesel mechanic guy. On so. my LMY, LM, it's right there. And I'm thinking that's where the LBZ would be too. Like right under where this pipe is, uh -huh. that's where your EGR cooler sits. Okay. And there's a black plate right there. So yeah. There's a plate right there? Like right, is it like it'd be right there normally? No, it would normally be like sitting right there oh, next to the turbo. Okay, okay sitting up high. Okay. All right, cool. EGR delete then. We'll make sure we don't see any milky substances under there. It's kind of black. Coolant was kind of black too, so. Yeah. What we can do is we can check the blow by. Yeah. Later in Once the video. Up. Is it over there? Yeah. The trainee's back there. Not bad. Looks like he may have done the oil change recently. 
Actually, never mind. Yeah. But then again, these diesels, the oil turns black 100 miles into driving it. I will honestly say I've never changed my own oil on any of my Duramaxes. Really? I was just, I got to a point in life where I was just too busy to do stuff like that. Yeah. So I always took it to Master Beer at GMC and they'd always, I was like, hey man, here. Let's do it. Because I'd be in and out. I'd be like, all right, next trip coming up. Here it is, take it in, get it in, get it out. And here it is, building his own truck now. Right? Um, I, I used to do, I used to work on my own car yeah. all the time. I just never got into like my maintenance part avalanche. of it. Avalanche. No, yeah. I did the maintenance on like my Avalanche. All my other trucks did it. But just the Duramax. It, it, yeah, it's just a busy time in life. I just didn't have time to do it. So I paid somebody else to do it. All right, so uh, brake fluid. How's it looking in there? Pretty it's good. good. Yeah, it's at, that's where it's supposed to be at. All right. It don't smell bad. Smells like brake fluid. That's a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> Battery, AC Delco batteries. All right, uh, so check the fluid, check the belts. What are these belts? The belts look good. I don't see any cracking in them. Mm -mm. Um, all right, we're gonna start it up and all right. we'll let me get your iPad. Start it up. Let me get your iPad so it doesn't fall. Let's see if there's any kind of haze. Usually, LBZs are pretty good about injectors, so we shouldn't really see any kind of haze or anything like that. Sounds like it's got a lift pump on there. Okay, maybe just a little cold. And then we'll rev it up. All right, you want to check the blow by? It's got 219,000 miles on it now. Yeah, it's got three more thousand. In here. No blow by. Yeah. But it's a it's heavy. A heavy yeah, yeah. So like, I don't even see. Yeah, I don't even see anything coming out of it though. That's a heavy ass cat. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna work. But I don't see any like excessive smoke coming out of it. The only thing is that oil does look nasty. Yeah. Time to unbox this bad boy. We're gonna check the injector balance rate. Luckily, there's no check engine light, but they could have cleared it. So what are your thoughts so far? So far, it's a no for me, dog. It's a no for you, dog. <laughs> and they want, they want like 20,000 for this truck too. They want 19 for it. No way I'm paying 19 for this. All right, so huge shout out to Edge for the CTS3. I mean, this is the perfect time for us to kind of do an unboxing and use it. So what we're doing right now is we're gonna to go to diagnostics. We're gonna to go to injector balance rates. And it should tell you plus or minus five. Four. If, four, if it's within that range, it's good. All right, boss, what you think? Oh yeah, there's there's a four on five. Injector six is at three point six. Injector five is right at four. The rest are pretty much within tolerance. Injector seven's, you know, it's at negative three. Bum bum bum. Yeah. So <laughs> seeing that doesn't give me a lot of confidence. I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean injectors are bad, but they're not the healthiest, and it's at two hundred twenty thousand miles. And just seeing this truck, I feel like a lot of work is going to be needed. Um, yeah. Yeah. Is there any uh, way to check the fuel rail pressure? Yes, we can, actually. And I think it's got a lift pump too, because I heard it. Ah, uh, okay. But what we'll do is we'll do the- I didn't see it, but yeah, they could have it tucked in, mm -hmm. tucked in the middle. Yeah, Matt definitely doesn't need another project truck. He's looking for a truck that's ready to go, reliable, that can tow his SEMA build. Up next on our checklist is... This is the rev up, rev down test. So All we're right. going to rev the engine up to 2000. Um, looking for injector failure. It would cause the motor to shake at a certain RPM. And then we'll rev down to make sure it's smooth and there's no hiccups. All right. So here we go, 
slowly climb to 2,000. Right there, you feel that? Yeah. That's right at like 1250, 1300. I will say the truck sounds really good. <laughs> it does. I felt a little, I felt a little shit. Yeah, I felt it right too. Right around 1,300, 12, 12 to 1,300 miles, or RPM, so. Which kind of goes along with the, um, with what we said on the, uh, how do you go back to the. Which one? To the um, injector stuff. Oh, injector? Yeah. So, you, yeah, there it is, diagnostics. And then you want to do balance rates and it's not like this truck's been sitting here for you know weeks and hasn't been started it just got returned a couple days ago right. yeah even letting it warm up for a little bit balance rate is still pretty high It doesn't read a certain uh, RPM. Okay. So these two, oh no, they're back. Yeah. I thought they were going to. I thought they kind of equaled out, but no, they all they're all out of whack. Four, four, negative three point seven. The hell was that? What? That's just a turbo. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's just a vein position, vein closing. Okay. An opening. Okay. So four, four, negative three, negative three. Potentially got some bad injectors or injectors that may be ready to go out. Yep. Um, I was thinking about taking them on the test drive, but I don't really want to waste their time. Yeah, I think this is a no. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have to pass on it. So, I appreciate uh, the guys here at Stokes Hodges Ford though giving us the opportunity to come look at it. Pass on this one, brother. <laughs> yeah. There's uh, there's other plenty of fishes in the sea. It is, but there's like, it's like when they come up, when you find a good one, you gotta jump on it yeah. fast because they're go. gone within a day or two. And like, it'll even tell you like on Auto Trader or cars.com, it'll tell you, hey, this car will most likely sell in eight days or less. Yeah. And so like, if you're not one of the, if you don't see it the day it comes out or you're not in there in that first couple of days, you're most likely gonna miss out on it. Oh, that's for sure. All right, well, checklist has been pretty much completed. So Shout out to Truckmaster uh, Truck for hooking us up with that. You know, appreciate that video that he did. Um, and, yeah, we made a checklist on it. So I'll be willing to send this around, too, if anybody wants it. Well, oh, yeah, if anybody needs it. Let's figure out a way to, I guess we can make a drop box or something. Yeah, I'll post it online somewhere so yeah, well, people can go grab it. All right, cool. I'll send you a link to it. All right. All right, so what's the uh, what's the verdict? It's a no, man. Uh, no, not for me, not for what I need. It's a good truck if I wouldn't, if I were you, and you want to come up here to Stokes Hodges Ford and check out this truck, um, I wouldn't pay more than 17 18 at the most for it. Right. Um, it's a good truck if you've got some time and some money to spend to put into it. Uh, but for what I need, I need something that's reliable. I need something that's almost turnkey ready, pretty much. And I don't have to dump a lot of money into um, to get it to where it needs to be. So I got to pass on this one, man. He's buying a tow truck to pull his $100,000 truck. He doesn't need something that's going to require work, that's going to break down on the side of the road, going to um, you know truck shows and whatnot. And it's going to be his daily driver, too. So he doesn't need it sitting in his garage waiting for injectors and waiting for head gaskets or whatever. So it needs to be ready to go. And that's kind of the hard part. Right now, the truck market is so high and everybody wants to buy pre-emission vehicles. So finding like an LBZ or even LMM is going to be... LMM is going to be a lot easier. I'll tell you that. But finding an LBZ, it's going to be really hard. LLY might be easier, but at that point, might as well go with an LMM just for the sake of six-speed transmission. Because you're going to be towing a lot. It's going to be a lot of highway miles. So you, you need that lower RPM. So, yeah, I mean, it was a cool... It had a lot of potential from what we saw online. But seeing it in person, it's a definitely a no. <laughs> it's not worth it. <laughs> no. Not, not, not for the price and everything else. So, But I will say, like... Drop a comment below 
and change my mind on a dually as a daily driver. Oh, uh, right dually. now I'm I'm I've won a dually, but since I need a daily driver, I'm kind of sticking to a single rear wheel. But change my mind. Yeah, he's gonna be <laughs> dailying it every single day. Meaning, you know, that's why it's called a daily driver. But it's gonna be driving that to go get groceries and whatnot. So should he get one? Leave a comment I below. Want one, but. Dude, Dooley would be badass. With a flatbed, like what I saw that was in Texas, oh, that yeah. sold in a matter of hours. Yeah, exactly. Like, crazy, man. Yeah, when but you find something that clean, it goes. We're going to be truck shopping. So if you guys actually know anybody selling a Dooley or LBZ or LMM under, what, 250,000 miles, I mean, lower the better, within price range of fifteen to $20,000, hit up Matt, hit his DM, uh, let him know that you got one. You're willing to travel, right? I am willing to travel. As long I'm, as it's I'm a good truck. I'm almost ready to go to California. Right, for that one truck. There's one out in California. <laughs> yeah, let's just hope that it doesn't look like that when you show up, right? Right, right, right. That would be super disappointing. <laughs> but uh, that is it for this video. Huge shout out to Truckmaster for the checklist. I mean, it came in handy. You guys saw us, saw us use it. Um, we're not mechanics, but you know that checklist did help us out. And it helped us, uh, it prevented us from, or prevented Matt from buying that truck. Because had he not had the checklist, he may have bought it, potentially. What I am going to try to invest in is one of these edges, though. Because uh, this right here is pretty legit. Right. To be able to read those codes and everything without a scan tool of some sort. Like, this is pretty legit. Checking the balance rates and all that stuff. So, we might do another giveaway. So leave a comment below if we think if you think I should do another giveaway of the CTS3 because I mean gas trucks can use it too. These also you can put the it's got a HDMI and a USB so can you? Well, HDMI is for the for that for that. Oh, okay. I don't know if you could use it as the as what like what's his name did for the frontward first oh, you can. camera. Oh you can. You can just it's got to put a splitter on it or something. You can use this right here the EAS system uh -huh. Uh -huh. and somehow you can do it I don't know personally how you wire it up but you can use it as a front-facing camera if you don't have one so but yeah that is it for this video thank you guys so much for watching Matt's gonna be searching for his daily toe pig so <laughs> keep on the lookout I'll see you guys next time peace